Hi there. You're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 117. Every woman has to be a woman of independent means. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped. And now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar shop, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. And today, I have joining us, Rebecca Bloomfield. You know, getting insurance today is super overwhelming. More than 15 years ago, though, Rebecca Bloomfield and her husband and partner, Jerry Perlstein, decided to use their experience and their empathy to open an insurance agency specifically for the entrepreneur. They provide health, life, long-term care, and disability insurance to people who don't have a company already who's providing those benefits. Rebecca's particularly concerned about women who often don't think of themselves. A little bit of knowledge and pre-planning can prevent a catastrophe that many of us would never even see coming. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. And Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Sue. I'm delighted to be here. So I've already told you that our tradition here is by having you describe yourself a little bit differently. We're all creatives here, so that's how that came about. If you were to describe your ideal motivational candle, what color would it be and what would be the quote on your candle? My candle would be purple. I think of that as heavenly, a spiritual color. And my quote would come from Abigail Adams, whose life I've researched and who I portrayed for a long time, Abigail said, in despair are the seeds of hope. So if you're feeling down, if things aren't going well, there's something in that situation that actually holds the seed for you to go further than you are now. Absolutely. And we're not going to get into Abigail right now. But Gift Biz listeners, if Rebecca's voice sounds a little bit familiar, she was on a past episode where we had her portray Abigail. And we're going to talk about that a little later. So I won't get into any more of that right now, but more to come. So stay tuned as we proceed through this broadcast. Rebecca, what I'd love for you to do is start and talk about how you got into insurance in the beginning. I come out of a corporate life. I was a creative VP at an international ad agency, and that agency broke into pieces, and I was in the cracks and decided to pursue a different passion. I, of course, lost my health benefits. I had been a VP, so my life insurance was paid for by the company. I didn't understand that I didn't own it and that they did, as well as my long-term care insurance. And suddenly I had to get my own. And as you said in the beginning, I found out how very difficult this was. At the same time, my wonderful husband Jerry's company was about to be sold and bought for the third time in six years. He was a national VP sales. And we said, you know, I can't go to yours now because you may be leaving your company. So... I said, why don't we find out more about how an individual goes about getting health, life, long-term care, disability benefits for themselves, even a retirement program, and that evolved into a unique agency serving people who have to get their own benefits, entrepreneurs, sole practitioners, artists, and people like that that we love. Right. So you saw the need for yourself and thought, well, if I have this need, there are other people who are going to have that need too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think even more so now than when you started, I think you said 15, almost 16 years ago now, this whole entrepreneurial let's go into business for ourselves is so much more prevalent even now today. So I'm assuming that the demand is even greater now. It is for several reasons. One is always, unfortunately, in corporate America, a flow of people in and out of positions, and some of them decide that they're not going back into corporate life. And the vigor of people 60 and over, while they may be done with a business that they've been in, have an idea that they wish to pursue, 
and start all over again as excited entrepreneurs. So it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, you're right. I mean, so many people now, including a lot of our listeners, are saying, you know, I want a second career. Might be on the side while they're still with a company that's paying them insurance, but eventually they want to flip it so that they're doing it all themselves. And aren't we lucky that we're able to do that now? But with that comes the responsibility of making sure you're covered. So really important stuff. All right, well, let's talk about this now. What do we need to be thinking about? If we're somebody who now doesn't have any coverage because we've left our business, something's happened with a past company and they've reduced staff, you know, whatever it is, and you're sitting here today, what would you advise people? Give us a feel for where we should be going with this. Two things, Sue. First of all, the advice is for even people starting out as young as 25 or 30 let alone people who are 50 and 60. And secondly, you talked about catastrophe. And people think about life insurance as something that happens and it pays off after you die. But life insurance has benefits for people while they are living. And those benefits are particularly important to entrepreneurs. For instance, whole life insurance has a cash value. And there's a perfect example, Doris Christopher, who launched Pampered Chef, used a loan from her personal whole life insurance policy to launch that program. The money was available to her within 72 hours. There were no federal tax consequences or penalties for her taking the money at the time she did. She started Pamper Chef, and eventually she sold it to Warren Buffett for a reported $900 million, a real-life benefit in life insurance. Wow. How long would someone need to have a policy before they could draw on it? The time frame is dependent on your age. Certainly, after a year or two, there is some cash value that's available to you, and it continues to grow. So it's pretty quick. It's not like you have to wait even a decade. So all the more reason if you're just starting out, like you said, you're younger or you think you might be retiring and you haven't already gotten coverage. Either way, if you did it right away today, you can be reaping those rewards within a year or two. Yes. Now, whole life insurance does have this cash value. The dividends are earned at a guaranteed rate. And we offer policies that consistently exceed their guaranteed rate by more than 50%. And this money can be taken or borrowed, usually at any time, without penalty and without federal tax. Who knew? (laughs) Another life benefit is we have a 47-year-old independent business owner who had never been hospitalized in his life. And this does speak to the catastrophe that you're talking about, but he hit a medical problem that put him in the hospital for weeks. His whole life insurance policy that he started when he was 30 years old, when he started his own business, offered three elements of safety for himself and his family. He had access to this cash within 72 hours to help hire someone to keep his business going. Even though he was only 47, it's not like borrowing from a 401k. There was no penalty and there were no federal taxes. He had access to funds when it seemed his illness might cause him to need long-term care because his policy had a provision that should he need long-term care, should a doctor determine he needed care longer than 90 days, he could access up to 80% of the death benefit of his policy, money in his hand to pay for at home or in facility treatment. And then, of course, if the God forbid it happened, the traditional death benefit for his family still would have come into play, all from one policy that he started when he was 30. Wow. So this is different, though, than business insurance that you would have, let's say, if you have a partner or something like that. This is a totally separate category, right? It's under life insurance. And we'll talk about some partnership. You bring up a good point. But this is most of the time people start with us when they get married or have their first child. And these days it's around age 30. You know, it's later than it has been previous decades. I'm just trying to make sure that we're clear when we're talking with our listeners that business insurance that you would have to protect your business is different than what we're talking about here. This is personal insurance. Right. That's our specialty. 
And people think, oh, a life insurance policy, I'll pay and pay these premiums, and it won't help anybody unless I die. And if I don't die, I've paid these premiums and nothing happens. But that's not the kind of life insurance we're talking about. Got it. A triple threat whole life insurance policy, growing funds for you, giving you availability, giving you tax advantage, giving you access to long-term care insurance benefits all in one policy. Okay. What would you say about somebody, I mean, a lot of the people who are listening are women. What would you say to somebody who says, oh, yeah, we're covered. You know, my husband's covered and that's fine. Because so often as women, we don't think about ourselves. All we're thinking about is everybody else. Right. What would you say, speak to the women out there and what should they be thinking about? Well, women are going to be the last men standing. You got that. (laughs) Fashion long-term care of standalone policies sometimes were for a couple, but it wasn't unusual in 80% of the time for the husband to have used up the majority of those funds and for the wife to be left without those funds. And they were mostly for nursing facilities and they were for a limited number of years. But every woman has to be a woman of independent means. We women are independent thinkers. We women plan for the benefit of ourselves and most often families, although I'll talk about single women in a minute. And for us to continue to have the wonderful, vigorous lives that we want until the very end, it's so very easy early on to establish a plan that is a savings plan, a retirement plan, a long-term care benefit plan, and a legacy plan all in one place. Once that's set up, that safety net is in place, that growth has begun. And you can even do a plan where you can pay premiums for only 15 years and stop paying the premiums and the benefits continue to grow. Why would not an independent-minded woman want to do that for herself? Absolutely. And then women say to me, well, I'm single, you know, there are more women of marriageable age in America who are single than are married. But that's even more reason to have a plan to take care of yourself your whole life long and not be dependent on a husband or children to see you through the 30 years you're probably going to have between 65 and 95. Right. And so just, I know this is going to be a broad range, but just, I think the question will be out there for people. What type of a price, like a monthly price, do you think this is? And I know it's going to depend on everyone's individual situation, but just as a feel for somebody, what types of costs would we be talking about? Sue, I really can't go there. It depends on where you live. It depends on your age at the time you start. Certainly the younger you start, the lower the premiums are. And it depends on your health, which also depends on how young you are. Unfortunately, people often come to us at 65 when they're starting Medicare and say, I'd like to start my long-term care planning now. But that's late. Your premium is going to be much higher. And so, as I said, when you're starting out when you're 30, if you are a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or uncle, Lay a whole life insurance policy as a graduation gift on a college graduate. It's dollars a month, and you will pay for 15 years. Turn the policy over to them. They will have a cash value that would continue to grow. I did this for my own son. It's the basis for his retirement planning. He is uh, an entrepreneur and in business for himself, and I've done it for my grandchildren. That is an excellent idea, Rebecca. I would have never thought of that. That is a really, really good idea. And what I'm hearing you saying and pretty much recommending to everybody is don't even think about it. Just get started. (laughs) Like wherever you are right now, unless you're a 14-year-old listening to the show, wherever you are, if you are now out in the workforce, get something for yourself also because the younger you are, more than likely the less expensive it's going to be and you'll be able to reap benefits. And it's kind of like that thing where you just stash some money away for a pay check every month, and then it builds. Same type of thing. Exactly. I'd like to say something. We've been talking about whole life insurance and this new kind of combined whole life insurance policy. 
there is a place for term life insurance. Term life insurance, you pay for a certain term, 10 years, 20 years. If you die, the death benefit goes to the designated beneficiary. And if you don't, you've paid out those premiums and you get nothing back. But that is a good kind of insurance to have in a partnership. Last year, unfortunately, one of the partners in a two-women partnership passed away suddenly. It was three weeks from diagnosis to her passing. And the company had bought term life insurance policies on her and her partner. When she passed, within a week, her partner had the cash in hand to help hire somebody in. It happened at their season. And then to take a breather and decide how she was going to move forward, if she was going to repartner, what incentives she could offer a partner coming in. So while it was personally devastating to her that her partner had passed away, it was not devastating to the business. Excellent ad there because, I mean, there are so many things, especially when you're going to be creating a business with somebody else, the last thing you're really thinking about is, you know, you're more thinking about, well, what if it doesn't work and we dismantle, but you're not necessarily thinking about whether somebody passes. So really important. Okay, moving on just a little bit, if we've gotten some people to now think, oh my gosh, I ought to probably go talk to somebody about all of this and see what my options are. Are there different types of things that they should prepare and have gathered before they would go and meet somebody? Certainly, you will be asked your health situation and the health situation of your parents. Is there cancer in the family? Is there heart disease in the family? Is there longevity in the family? And so you should have that information with you when you come. You should have an idea, and a good agent will help you, about what your financial situation is now for the affordability of a plan, because there are plans that can grow with you. So if you're starting now with a certain amount that can be budgeted towards the life insurance, and the life insurance can be crafted so that you can add benefits and add growth to it, it, it very realistically know what you can afford now. And your agent is beholden to you to work within your budget. Okay. And then let's even back up a little bit further. How do you even find somebody that you trust who you feel is respectable or the type of person that you would want to work with on this? <laughs> That's interesting because we couldn't find anybody like us <laughs> <laughs> when we started out. So it's not property casualty people. There are some financial planners who also have these kind of products. There are some very well-established companies. Mostly, I like to talk about the mutual companies, and that's like Guardian, Northwestern Mutual, Mass Mutual, the mutual companies that are owned by the policyholders, and you can always call them. And of course, you can always call us, Jerry S. Pearlstein Insurance. Absolutely. But you, I mean, this is such a sensitive topic and you're sharing a lot of personal information. You really want to feel comfortable with who you're working with. And anyone who's going to call you is going to know how comfortable and just, you know, respecting of the information. I'm sure there's legal things behind it too. Sometimes you just don't want to call a big company and talk to somebody that you don't know on the other end. Now, everyone's getting to know you because you're sharing it with all of us today. But is there a certain classification or a certain name or is it just because you're focusing on smaller individually owned businesses is that what they should look for if they don't want to go with some of the bigger companies is that how it would go you're in a community that has a chamber of commerce chamber of commerce is usually a great place for people like yourself who are entrepreneurs and very small business people and they know their membership they wouldn't have accepted them for members if they weren't trustworthy people. So I would go to a chamber of commerce. You know, the whole idea of going online these days, when you say you feel uncomfortable going to a big business, I feel uncomfortable going to insurance and getting a lifetime situation that way. Yeah, I agree with you for sure. And of course, people always ask, 
the people in their family or trusted friends who they use. It's a huge referral business. At this point, all our business is referral business, and that's the place that I would go. Great direction there. Is there anything else that you want to add in this area of just the insurance before we move on? I'd just like to state again that always in our career, when we say life insurance, people say death. But the life insurance industry has been much more responsive to the real life situation of people who are living wonderful lives and living long and wonderful lives. And the products now available are much more suited to living a long and wonderful life in addition to the death benefit. What would you say to someone who wants to kick this can down the road? You know, they're working for a bank right now. They're doing a yarn business on the side. So they're just doing that out of the house and they're feeling, okay, well, I can count on, you know, I'm with the company right now. So I'm just going to have that plan. And if ever I need to do something for myself later, I'll think about that. What would you say to those people? Don't wait till later. (laughs) Do it. Now, um, your advice earlier on was exactly the advice. Do it now. Find an agent. Go to a chamber of commerce. Ask your friends. NAHU, the National Association of Health Underwriters, has members who are independent agents as well as the insurance companies. Bring what you can afford and your health history, and you will work with an agent who will work out a growing living plan for you. And then would you keep your company insurance as well? If the company is paying for a life insurance policy, certainly keep that. But know that should you leave that company, the policy is owned. It's a term policy. It doesn't have this combination of benefits that a whole life policy has. And it's owned by the company. One of the worst pieces of advice I think that people get is, you know, don't worry about it. The company is paying for it. Take it and don't worry about taking care of yourself. But we all know that careers take different paths. Who can know when a life begins, where it will lead to the end? And that I go back to whether you're a woman or married or single or a single man or a man with a family. The best thing you can do for yourself is to make sure that you are independently cared for and have established your own safety net that goes with you wherever you go. That's a really good point because I think so often, you know, especially when kids are just right out of school and they're getting their job, you know, the thing you say is, oh, well, do they offer insurance, right? But the conversation doesn't continue what type of insurance is it? What are you specifically covered for? It's either like insurance, yes or no. You check it off the list and then you just move on. So I would encourage anybody who's listening who isn't sure of the details of the insurance that they currently have to educate themselves first, see what they have, and then take Rebecca's advice. You know, find someone and maybe it's Rebecca. Maybe you're going to call her on the phone and talk this through with her. But what other options do you have? Where are the vulnerabilities and what you already have? And what would be a good thing to set up as a base groundwork for the future? So we are going to turn now into a little bit more about you, Rebecca. And I have to tell all my gift biz listeners, we have been talking networking quite a bit. Oh, if you're following me over on social media, I have that little mini course, the networking ninja, all that stuff. And we talk a lot about the elevator speech. And Rebecca, I've returned elevator speech to be called an introduction message because it sounds a lot easier and it's a lot more of what it really is all about. Rebecca rocks her introduction message every time she's at a networking meeting. And the cool thing that you do, I didn't even tell you I was going to do this. I just decided as I was (laughs) talking right now. I'm not asking you to do a demonstration, Rebecca. Don't worry. But the thing that she does so well is it's not the same thing time after time after time. When we talk about networking meetings, we talk about the fact that you need to show up at these events over and over again. And if someone has the very same introduction speech over and over again, it's like the same thing, the same thing. Rebecca aligns it to things that are happening in the day, in the time. And Rebecca, just real quickly, how do you decide what you're going to talk about when you go to an event? Because they're always different and they're always so enjoyable. Thank you. From the very beginning where we had to educate people to the fact that help like us did exist for them, 
and we went to networking events where the people who needed our help were. So that was a good thing. I've tried to take one sentence education. So let's say we have just been talking about the need, how life insurance, whole life insurance is for life and not just after you die. So a one sentence intro might be sustainability. Do you know that whole life insurance can sustain you for a long and wonderful life and not just a death benefit? Call me to learn more. I'm Rebecca Bloomfield, Jerry Pearlstein Insurance. Jerry's my honey. We make sure you never run out of money. Isn't that great, you guys? Oh my gosh, I love it. And the thing that I love so much about that, you've just given us a little education on an introduction speech. Your comment of the one sentence education is gold. I just love that. So you put that little education piece in the front. Right. And then you have, you know, the next line that's a little bit about your business and your little tagline is adorable. Jerry's my honey, you know, save you money. All of that is so fun and it gets people's attention. Gift Biz listeners, the goal there is then for people to come up to Rebecca later and have a one-on-one conversation. That's right. I think the thing about elevator speeches and perhaps sales, and you are a model of sales, We were at a networking this morning and somebody said, how do I convince people? You're not going to convince people during networking. You're going to invite them. What is the invitation to come engage and talk about what problem needs to be solved and how you best solve it? Perfect. Agreed. Okay, so if you've been listening to this show regularly, you know that some of the other questions that I ask are what types of tools you use to be productive, traits that you have. But with Rebecca, I'm switching it up a little bit because she has a bunch of interesting things going on. One was how she approaches her elevator speech slash introduction message. The other thing, Rebecca, I'd love for you to talk about is your portrayal of historical and famous women. But to go back to Abigail's in the depths of despair are the seeds of hope. When I was losing my corporate job, I realized that I now had the opportunity to pursue some writing, which I love, in areas that I couldn't while I was writing corporately. And I love history. I love the Federalist Bill period. That's where I started. And that's how I wrote was um, engaged to write about Abigail Adams. When I wrote that play about the life of Abigail Adams, it opened up opportunities to write about the lives of many other women, one of them being Lady Bird Johnson. I had dinner with her. Wow. Communities would ask me, a community in Wisconsin heard about what I did and said, would you come up here? Our first doctor was a doctor on snowshoes, a woman. And how can we put together material so that we can tell her story to our children while they're still in our school? A woman in Ohio who was a midwife, really remarkable woman, left a whole sketchbook behind. A woman from the Gullah country. And each time I was asked to come in and work with the communities, I was so inspired by the women in the community. And finally, I was asked about, I live in Skokie, Illinois, and was asked by the community and given a grant to do the same thing for the first head of the Board of Health in Skokie was a woman. And the first cabin which they have, one of their first settlers, Elizabeth Meyer. And each time I am asked to do this for a community, It is so inspiring to meet, and it really is like meeting women who have just overcome obstacles and made their lives so rich, and in so doing, made our lives so rich. Continuous inspiration. And Gift Biz listeners, I have a treat for you, because if you have not heard Rebecca as Abigail Adams already, that is available. That's a podcast we did, boy, I think it's almost a year and a half ago. 
And I got the opportunity to interview Abigail Adams. So that was very cool. Really, really interesting and powerful podcast. I'll link that up in the show notes. Rebecca has also agreed to do another show, apart from her and her business insurance life, with the woman that she was just introducing you to, Elizabeth Meyer. And that will be coming up closer to the end of the summer. I think we're going to try and put that on Labor Day, right, Rebecca? Yes. I encourage you to watch for those because they are really, really powerful episodes. All right, moving on, Rebecca, is there a book you would guide our audience to to listen to that you think could provide some additional value? Well, in one of those times of despair, I was introduced to a book called You Can't Afford the Luxury of a Negative Thought. The author's name is John Hyphen Roger, and I'm not sure that it's in print, but Amazon does have it. And it spoke to me because I was having a lot of negative thoughts just through the title. You can read it all at once or you can go dip in and there is some advice, encouragement, inspiration to take at this moment, that's very practical and very doable. So you can't afford the luxury of a negative thought by John Roger. Perfect. So and what you're saying really makes me happy is it's just not all inspiration and all that. It sounds like there's some real actionable things once you've read it, you can take away and use and implement into your life. Right. All right. And Gift Biz listeners, just as you're listening to the podcast today, you can listen to audiobooks with ease. I've teamed up with Audible for you to be able to get an audiobook for free on me. All you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and make a selection. That's giftbizbook.com. Okay, Rebecca, I'd like to present you with a virtual gift now. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. So this is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it right here in our presence. What is inside your box? Inside the box, what has developed lately, I am moved by the simple phrase, I have an idea. And I would like to be able to work with early readers and primary grade children or elementary school children to foster in them creativity, starting with a simple phrase, I have an idea, and how to make it okay to have an idea, how to express an idea, how to develop an idea. That's what I would like to be doing going forward, and I'd like to attract the sources, the support to do that. Would this be a business or a volunteer organization or what? I'm not sure of the form at the moment. But you've got the idea. I have an idea. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. I'm anxious to see how that evolves because you are a woman of action. I know that. I'm developing a series of blogs called Really Bad Advice. And from my years as an entrepreneur, from a base of people's misconceptions about insurance or what pays for what. It's just been fun, and it's been fun starting with the idea of really bad advice. If you go to the website, jperlsteinltd.com, I hope you'll enjoy starting to read those. I love that title, because that's going to attract people right away. (laughs) Really bad advice. That's perfect. (laughs) All right, and also at your website then, Rebecca, is that also, will it have information if someone is interested in talking with you a little bit further on everything we've talked about insurance-wise? Absolutely. We have uh, three must-have life insurance benefits for entrepreneurs. We have long-term care, who pays for what, how to look at life insurance, lots of information on our website, jperlsteinltd.com. Perfect. So hopefully, you guys, we have both, mostly Rebecca, I'm just the conduit here with this podcast, but encourage you and given you cause to stop and think about how covered are you? What is your current company providing? All about this option of even if you have that coverage, it is highly beneficial for you to open up something that you own that goes with you for your whole life. So really, don't just stop this show turn it off and move on. Give this a little bit of thought and decide for yourself. Rebecca's clearly advising that all of us should be doing this, but really think this through and make a good decision for yourself based on where you are in life. 
Rebecca, thank you so much. Really, really important. If we can just get a few people here to take action and follow what you've done, that would be fabulous. Hopefully it will be everybody, right? That would be our goal. Thank you so much for your insight, your direction, and all of the detail. And may your candle always burn bright. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much for this important opportunity. I have a question for you. Do you know that you should be out networking, but you just can't get yourself to do it because it's scary? Are you afraid that you might walk into the room and not know anybody? Or that you're going to freeze when you get up to do that infamous elevator speech where you talk about yourself and your business? Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't need to be scary if you know what to do. To help you with this, I would like to offer you a coffee chat. For the price of buying me a cup of coffee, we can sit down through an online video and I'll tell you everything that I know about networking and how I have personally built two multi-six-figure businesses primarily through networking. You'll walk away with a solid understanding about how networking can truly grow your business. And you're going to have newfound confidence because I'm going to give you 10 fill-in-the-blank templates that you can use for your introduction message. To learn more about this opportunity, just go over to bit.ly forward slash network ninja. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash network ninja. And now let's move on to the show. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information.